Making a documentary could be one of the most challenging experiences filmmakers can ever encounter. And doing it by yourself, well, that's some next level stuff. When I first started, it felt like everything that I did, I did the hard way. And by the end of the day, I was so exhausted and beat up from running around and filming everything myself that I would question whether or not I was cut out for this. And the worst part is that half the footage that I would shoot wouldn't even be usable. But over the years, I figured out a few things that really made a huge difference when it came to filming documentaries by myself. Today, we're gonna break all of this down and hopefully help you guys become more efficient while making documentaries by yourself. Now you guys might not realize this, but there are some strengths to shooting this project by yourself. Chances are you probably don't have any real deadlines or massive budgets with corporate clients to please. So the good news is that you're gonna be able to film this at your own pace and you actually have the most valuable resource in your arsenal and that is time. So just remember that if you are taking on a project by yourself, you gotta keep in mind that it's important not to stress yourself out or get overwhelmed. And just remember that Rome wasn't built in a day. Making a documentary by yourself could be a long and lengthy process and you guys have to let that be okay. Think about it. If you go out and you shoot some B-roll or some interviews that don't turn out great, the worst thing that could happen is that you have to go out and shoot them again yourself. You're not gonna let any corporate clients down or hold huge production budget go to waste. All you gotta do is make sure that you keep your subjects happy and you make sure that they're okay. That's the only other person that you have to worry about. And the reason why I'm talking about this first is because I think it's so important to be in a good, healthy mindset before you take on a project like making a documentary, especially if you're doing it by yourself. If you go into this project expecting perfection as a solo filmmaker without spending a ton of time and effort on this project, I hate to break it to you guys, but you're gonna be disappointed. You really have to lean into the fact that you have an abundance of time and effort that you're willing to put into this passion project. And if you go into this project with that mindset, I promise you guys, eventually, you're gonna create something truly great. You just have to remember to believe in yourself and don't settle for mediocrity and realize that it's gonna take time. The next thing that I wanna talk about is something that I preach all the time on this channel, and that is making sure that you spend the time that you need to create a good pre-production plan. I always recommend that when you're making a documentary, you have to plan a story structure and have some sort of outline or script to help you guide your story. Most of the time, I'll make sure that I have a storyboard or at least a shot list for all of my production days. Now, some filmmakers have the ability to follow around their subjects for weeks or even months at a time. And that's great. If you have that opportunity and you have the ability to do that, that's awesome. But on the flip side of that, when you're making a documentary, especially by yourself, you have to be well aware of what your capabilities are as a solo filmmaker. And you have to be able to plan and schedule your shoots within your limitations. So if you know that you could only film once a week or you only have five days in the month to get this all done, you have to make sure that you plan out your schedule and you plan out your productions with some sort of guide and understanding of what it is that you need to film for each one of those days. And that means that you have to leave little gaps in between your shooting schedule for interview setup and breakdown times, prepping your equipment to transition from interviews to B-roll. And what this is gonna do for you guys is make sure that you make the absolute most out of your time when you're on set or when you're following around your subjects. And the other thing that's very important is to make sure that your subjects are well aware of this schedule that you have that you let them know like, hey, look, from this time to this time, we're gonna be shooting interviews, then you can take a break, then from this time to this time, we're gonna be shooting B-roll, or maybe I'm just gonna follow you around in your training or your workout, or maybe, you know, you're gonna follow them around while they're in class or doing a research project or whatever it is that they're doing. You, you have a schedule laid out and they have an understanding of how the day is gonna be broken down. If you guys wanna learn more about documentary filmmaking, my team and I are actually putting together a documentary filmmaking course where we take you from idea to final edit and even show you guys how to sell your films to major streaming platforms. So if you guys are interested in something like this, I'll leave a link right up here. You guys can click on that link and we'll notify you as soon as the course drops. There have been so many times where I've been in the middle of shooting and there's multiple things happening around me that need more than just one camera to cover all of it. And as all of this is happening, you know that there's no way of capturing all of this right now in that moment by yourself. But I have a few tips for you guys to get the absolute most out of shooting by yourself. 
My first tip is when you're filming a conversation, make sure to capture both people talking as well as capture them listening. What this is gonna allow you guys to do is when you're cutting up this conversation in post, you're gonna be able to, instead of doing jump cuts of the conversation, you're gonna be able to cut back and forth to somebody talking, to somebody listening, and you're gonna be able to actually edit that conversation down into whatever you want it to be. Another tip is when you're filming someone speaking, and maybe you wanna capture details like a person's hands or maybe an object that they're holding, I ask them what I like to call a dummy question. And basically this is a question that is just supposed to get them speaking with the intention of being able to get a natural feeling detailed shot. And you could also use a dummy question to stir up conversation between someone talking and someone listening and you can actually capture that person listening because you don't really care about what the person talking is actually saying. It's just a question to get the momentum of the conversation going. And then my third tip is to try to think of every scene from a wide, medium, and close-up shot. This is gonna help you tell a story with your B-roll and allow you guys to be flexible with your edit. You know, there's been so many times that I've went out and I shot something and I'm like, man, like I really wish that I had a super wide shot or I really wish that I had like a really close-up macro shot because I'm a little stuck in the edit right now and I. I don't have the shot that I need to actually transition or tell the story. From that point on, I realized I I'm gonna take every shot that I shoot, if I have the time for it, to go out and make sure that I get a wide, medium, and close up of everything. And the last thing that I wanna tell you guys is don't be afraid to ask your subject to do an action again. Now you definitely don't wanna make a habit of doing this for every shot because you can easily start to frustrate your subject and get them kind of annoyed while you're shooting this B-roll but I think it's definitely important for really important pivotal storytelling shots to make sure that you really nail them and you get them from that wide, medium, and close-up perspective, especially if you know that this is gonna be something that you need to tell your story. Now, just a few last tips to make sure that you guys get the absolute most out of your production is it's very, very important to make sure that you know your gear like the back of your hand. I don't care what camera you're shooting on or what high tech equipment you're using. I don't even care if you're literally going with just a camera body and a microphone. Whatever it is that you're shooting on, make sure that you're very comfortable with it. You could troubleshoot it and make sure that you're not gonna spend a ton of time fiddling around with it while you're trying to set up for an interview or B-roll because at the end of the day, these aren't actors. These are subjects that you're following and you wanna be able to make sure that you integrate yourself into their life. You're not imposing or taking away that authenticity by checking your camera equipment or telling them to stop every two seconds because you didn't nail focus or you're unsure of your camera settings. Now, that also might mean simplifying your camera rig. That might mean leaving your prime lenses at home and just running out with a 24 to 70 zoom lens or simplifying your interviews and only using natural light and not setting up a bunch of film lights. The best thing that you can do, the absolute best thing that you can do is take a look at your shot list and try to figure out what are the essential film gear items that I need to be able to tell this story. Can I get away with not using film lights? Can I get away with just using one lens? What is the most minimal amount of gear that I could bring? Because when you're by yourself, you don't have a production assistant, you don't have an assistant cameraman, you don't have a DP, you don't have anybody. You're literally just doing everything by yourself. That means any battery that needs to get charged, that means any equipment that needs to be set up and put back, all has to be done by you. So really think about simplifying every single thing that you have. Another thing that's really important to think about is your relationship with whoever it is that you're filming. I think it's so important to make sure that this is an enjoyable experience for them as well as yourself and make sure that they're having fun and it feels like this is a fun creative thing that they're able to do. And like I said before, integrate yourself into their life, not taking away that authenticity of being able to follow them and just get and capture what it is that they do from their day to day. And don't get me wrong guys, if you see behind the scenes of my videos, you'll notice that I do ask my subjects to kind of act out a certain scene or maybe I place them and I stage them in a way where I could capture really good B-roll. And I think that that's okay, but sparingly. I think that the most important thing that you could do is try to just capture and be a fly on the wall in their everyday life and really try to capture that authenticity because that's something that's gonna read through the camera a lot more than really nice cinematic B-roll. When people feel like they're just watching someone and getting a behind the scenes or a behind the curtain look into someone's life, 
that's when you're really gonna capture someone's attention. So just keep that in mind when you're making your documentaries. I really hope this helps you guys at least have a little bit better of an understanding of how to approach shooting a documentary by yourself. I know a lot of times I'll click on a YouTube video hoping that I'm gonna have this epiphany of knowledge and that they're gonna give me everything that I need to be able to do something. And I end up clicking on the video and I'm, I'm sadly disappointed. I feel like you didn't give me any value. So I really just hope that this video gives you guys some sort of value and helps you in your journey making documentaries, especially making documentaries by yourself because I'm gonna be real with you guys, I know how hard it is to make a documentary by yourself. It downright sucks sometimes, but it also can be an incredibly rewarding experience knowing that you shot, directed, and edited everything by yourself and knowing that everything that the viewer is seeing is all your vision. So. That's pretty cool as well, man. Like always, I'd like to thank you guys so much for stopping in and hanging out, talking about documentary filmmaking. And I hope to see you guys next week. Deuces.